Today's case is a twisted case that started off um, as not a missing person case or a death, but a fugitive manhunt that turned into uh, the discovery of a gruesome crime scene and a series of really tragic and un unfortunate and completely avoidable um, errors and mistakes on behalf of the state, social workers, and the, the eventual death of a six-month-old little boy. So this case started off with the Gainesville, Georgia Police Department trying to serve a warrant for James Carlton Mathis. He had two outstanding warrants, but um, when they went to go to his um, home, which was a rundown uh, 1977 single wide mobile home that had no running water or electricity and was in extremely uh, poor uh, kept up condition, um, there actually wasn't a door on the trailer. There was only a um, shower curtain that hung from a shower curtain rod that uh, acted as kind of a doorway um, for the home. They, um, Amanda Gale Oaks and James Carlton uh, Mathis lived in the home for the least the last eight months on and off. So when they went to go serve the warrant for James Mathis, that they, they weren't there. A little unbeknownst uh, to them that uh, Amanda Gale Oaks and James Mathis went on the run. As soon as they, they heard through the grapevine that the police would have been looking for him and that they were out to serve a couple warrants for them for him most likely. One of them was a probation uh, violation warrant and the other one was part of an investigation um, and new uh, charges that he was about to receive. They went on the run with their six-month-old Curtis Mathis. Curtis um, was a typical six-month-old uh, boy, you know, just starting to learn um, the thing and everything in the world. Um, and he was born into a completely dysfunctional family. And I'll get to that in a little bit here. So let's start with the mother. Mother Amanda Gale um, Oaks, age 36, from Murrayville, Georgia, um, is where she had her last known residency. And um, she, from all, all accounts, from the age of uh, 19 on, has, has, she's been a drug addict. Um, she's been addicted to methamphetamines. She already had um, one adult daughter that uh, she voluntarily gave up custody of. Was placed in um, what they call community custody. That's not jail. It's kind of like juvenile hall, but also a um, foster home situation. But they, they it's all in its one umbrella there in Georgia. Um, and in that, in that this area that where they lived in the Gainesville area. So... Um, Amanda um, was a drug addict. She's already get, voluntarily given up the custody of one child. And here she is now with a six-month-old baby boy. Um, now, I, to touch on the, her daughter a little bit, um, the biological father is known, uh, supposedly, by Amanda, but there is no name listed on the birth certificate for um, this daughter. The father, who is supposed to be the fa supposedly the father, refused to sign it and has no name on the birth certificate. So Amanda uh, did just about anything she could. She never really worked a job um, unless she was trying to scam someone, and it was only for short periods of time. Uh, uh, she would use those to uh, ride out. Um, she panhandled. She stole. Uh, lied, cheated, um, anything to get money to get her drugs. And it wasn't um, a shocker to anyone in the police department when they you know, went to go serve the warrant that there was uh, almost no food in the home. There was no running water, like I, I said, and no electricity. And 
they, in the home, they found only a sparse amount of actual items that, you know, proof that there was even a baby living in these, you know, deplorable conditions. So, they, um, if they had everything, they cleaned out all the baby stuff and they left a bunch of garbage behind. But they, they were gone. Uh, so, she, uh, um, went on the run with her, um, boyfriend. She called him her husband, but they weren't, they're not legally married. And they, uh, took off. And nobody knew where they were, um, at first. So, let's, now let's get on to the father. James Carlton Mathis, age 28. James Mathis has spent most of his life in and out of trouble with law. His first brush with law goes back to when he was 11 years old. Yes, uh, it, I know it sounds like uh, only 18 years, but he has a criminal record that you know that is longer than most people who um, are in their 50s. So, James Mathis, but his actual conviction um, rate is kind of off uh, because he's a master at taking the plea deal. He, um, in the past, I looked at uh, several cases where he had several charges, and what he did was he was facing like three charges on one case, and another case he was looking at four, four charges, and he pled guilty and got the maximum on one, and they and, and um, they dropped the other two in the one where he had three. In the one where he had four, he pled guilty to two, and they dropped two. So his actual, you know, conviction rate to versus his charges are, um, that he was arrested for are not quite the same, but still a lengthy record. Um, James Mathis is also um, a known uh, gang member and addict as well. His uh, drug of choice, uh, besides uh, methamphetamines, is um, heroin. And uh, when he can't get that, he uh, is a known pot smoker as well. Now, uh, he uh, had no other children that um, are that are known. Um, and so that's where he is right now in the, in the case. Uh, we don't know if it, what his his motive is, besides that he is a drug addict. So, they went on the run, and they ended up in the Dothan, the Dothan Georgia area. And um, the police uh, uh, were not too far behind. Now, I'm going to read you uh, the actual anonymous tip to the police department um, that they got. And so they actually knew where the, to start looking for him. Police uh, um, received the, the following tip that um, James Carlton uh, Mathis uh, may be in the Dothan, Georgia area with Amanda Gale Oaks and their six-month-old baby boy and who might be dead. And I told you this, this case took a, it takes some twists. So that was a tip that they got. Now... Um, it was called in from, by a concerned um, citizen, an anonymous tip, so they don't really know who um, tipped them off. So the police started looking around in the area, and they uh, quickly uh, determined, because the word on the street was uh, James Mathis and Amanda Gale Oaks were staying in the extended stay um, motel there. Um, in town suites are located um, off of Ross Clark Circle. Another tip that they got. Everybody was looking to uh, roll over on these people and tell tell the police exactly where they were and what they were up to. Um, now, one uh, an additional source that is actually known um, to the police and who was very um, very well known uh, as this. Um, a stitch, I guess you'd call it, or an informant, um, was one of Amanda Gale Oaks's friends, Lynn. She only goes by its three-lettered name, Lynn, L-Y-N. And I'm not sure if that's her real name. Probably isn't. But uh, she said that um, the baby, um, Curtis, uh, would often um, be placed inside the um, shub-tub area, um, and then Amanda would close the door 
the glass door to the tub so it acted like a play area for this little boy and there, of course there was no water in the tub but she would put a six month old baby in the tub put some toys or something in there and say here you go while the, the rest of the motel room was basically a drug den for Amanda and um, James's friends and they would st sit around and they would get high on meth and at some point um, it, during this you know, weekend where it's um, they are not sure what transpired but this would be the end of May of 2018. Now they got the, the anonymous tip that they were in the Dothan area on June 1st uh, but at one the weekend prior there was as many as seven people who were in the motel room smoking meth together and doing heroin now and of course they when as they ran out they they smoked weed and people left and got more drugs people came but there were at one point there was many as seven people that is confirmed okay so um according now depending on which one you listen to uh, whose version because immediately after the arrest uh, both of them had started talking right away and because they're pro both probably coming down off of their drugs but they have Mandy has a story James has a story I'll tell you James's story first James's story is that um, Amanda killed um, Curtis and on that weekend when they, everybody was getting high he was in the bathtub and she went in and locked the bathroom door and and while at some point when she was in there smoking meth um, she must have suffocated the baby uh, because he didn't realize until later on until he went to use the bathroom that the baby was dead that's his version her version is is that she had left the motel room and had gone back to uh, the Murrayville area and uh, was going to retrieve her daughter and get her daughter in so they could all um, go on the run together along with the six month old baby and that while she was gone uh, uh, James had called her and told her that the baby was dead that's her version uh, well that that's the version they're sticking with right now but both I should add also that both of them through their attorneys are seeking a plea deal with the DA as we speak um, so the and the autopsy results for um, Curtis um, is you know the little boy is are not in yet and ha well if they are they have not been released um, in any form that I can find but they the police department did release the following uh, statement that um, uh, Curtis uh, body on, on initial examination um, determined that he had several um, um, bruises and lacerations to his his body neck and head area um, in particular so he was uh, severely uh, beaten you know, or at least neglected um, to the point where maybe he fell a lot in the bathtub I don't know so they left the baby deceased in the motel room with them um, and they he just they laid him out in the tub initially and um, left him there just stepped around him and moved him in and out of the tub as they needed the shower but just kept on partying and having a grand old time they um, his decomposing body started to smell so mom and dad together came up with the idea of wrapping the baby in a plastic shopping bag and towels from the motel and sadly they stuffed poor little Curtis in the freezer of the motel room in the kitchenette area now he wasn't discovered right away um, and according to the police um, at that point when they did it uh, you know both their versions of the, their stories um, is that uh, he was in the freezer um, at that point for five to six days while they both got high and just carried on with life like nothing had happened at all so back to the how this uh, this case uh, came to an end and um, how they were both eventually arrested so they ran out of money 
they couldn't afford uh, to stay high in the motel room anymore and they knew that the police were closing in on them because the word on the street was someone was asking questions about them in the Dothan area and they put two and two together that it was most likely the police asking questions. So they went on the run and they um, went to Florida. The police um, did receive a tip from someone, and most likely Lynn, um, and that uh, they were most likely on their way to Florida, where James has quite a few connections with um, fellow gang members. Um, a couple of them live in that area, and they also um, know the um, at least a couple of towns really well because they have traveled in and out through this area uh, to buy and um, sell drugs in the past. So the two of them took off to Bronson, Florida. And while they were in Bronson, they um, started to stay at a, you know, an associate friend or whatever you'd call him, of James's in a rundown um, high drug traffic area um, in his apartment. On the day in question, when this all ended, the undercover um, police officer happened to uh, spot Amanda Gale Oaks going into an apartment complex that they had been watching. And the SWAT team was called out to um, initially make an entry into the apartment. But as the police uh, started to um, go towards the um, actual apartment complex to make entry into it, um, they saw James uh, Mathis on the outskirts of the apartment complex. He yelled at the police, I have a gun, and um, pointed it, or, th or according to the police report, pointed it or at least threat he threatened an um, innocent bystander, or there was a bystander in between him and the police. It's not really clear what they actually meant by um, their statement um, there, but... He, um, while the SWAT team was approaching him, he did raise his arm with the handgun in it. They, he was uh, um, shot um, a total of four times, um, all of them non-life-threatening. He was, uh, you know, the emergency medical uh, team came, was rushed in, and they saved him. He's alive. He went to the hospital for his gunshot wounds. And immediately after he got to the, um, out of the hospital and transported to the jail, he started talking. He's not the brightest criminal in the world, and, but he is a, um, he's not a winner. He's a loser. So, Curtis Mathis, um, six-month-old baby boy, is now dead. A mom is in, in jail. The grand jury came back and uh, charged uh, father with uh, first degree murder and mom with uh, manslaughter at this point. But like I said, they are both still seeking um, you know, a deal with the DA to roll over on the other. And it will, I wouldn't be surprised if we get a couple um, of jailhouse uh, snitches in here um, trying to reduce their sentences. And I wouldn't be surprised also if one of the of the two doesn't roll over on the other one. Again, please, if you can, consider supporting this channel. You stay safe out there.